Yesterday morning, the Combat Council released a combat beta that completely changes the way that combat works in RuneScape. And in this video, we're gonna be going over all of the changes and outlining how impactful it really is. First off, I'm gonna mention that this beta is not completely balanced, and there are a couple weird edge cases. A good example is this Archglacier kill, where you'll see me one-shot the entire boss with a single Saren Godbow special. The devs have outlined that they are going to be making lots of changes to the beta based on feedback, testing, and what the players like and don't like about it. So this is one thing that I would very clearly suspect will get toned down just a little bit, because it's probably not the most balanced thing to be able to do 155,000 damage in a single butt. That being said, there's a whole bunch of really cool stuff to go over, so let's get into it right now. The first thing this combat beta does is it completely removes splashing and enables a damage potential system instead. This is the system that Necromancy currently follows, and this basically ports it over to the remainder of the game. To splash in RuneScape means you hit a zero, and if your hit chance was, for example, 50%, it would mean half of the inputs you made would actually connect and deal full damage, and the other half would deal no damage at all. And that can be very unsatisfying, because if you're gonna go to the effort to press a button, it kinda sucks that pressing that button wouldn't result in any damage being dealt to your target. In the damage potential system, you can see your chance to hit whatever target you're fighting just by looking at their HP bar and to the right hand side. But in a damage potential system, if your hit chance is 80%, instead of having four of every five of your attacks connect and hit, and then the other one out of five not hit at all, you'll instead do 80% of the total potential damage you could do at all times. This is a really nice change because it means that your chance to hit is still pertinent and important, and you want to get it as high up as humanly possible anything below 100%, and you're doing less than 100% of your damage. But you're never gonna have that annoying moment where a critical ability splashes and it ruins your entire kill. So overall, I think this is a fantastic change, and I think they could pretty much port this through the live game without changing anything else about it. It's just a way better system. Now, when you're looking at hit chance, there is one issue, which is the ingenuity of the human's ability. This very expensive ability was previously used to give yourself 100% hit chance for one singular hit, and it was used very frequently for applying debuffs to bosses you were fighting, like vulnerability, or in this case, smoke cloud. It's worth noting that in this damage potential system, if your hit chance is below 25%, which it would be if you were, say, trying to use a magic debuff in full ranged gear against a boss, you're still gonna need the Ingenuity ability, because if you're below 25%, which is pretty much only gonna happen in this instance, you're never gonna deal any damage. So Ingenuity is not dead content in this system, although the use case for it changes ever so slightly. The next massive change in this beta is a change to hit caps. When the Evolution Combat came out, the maximum damage you could deal in a singular hit was 10,000, and that was designed to just be a number so high that you'd never actually encounter it, and it was very arbitrary. But with power creep over the years, Hitting 10,000 is now extremely commonplace, especially with any kind of endgame setup and any kind of rotation. And because of that, what you would find is a lot of combat styles, especially melee, have this really annoying thing where you're right up against the hit cap, and that effectively means that you're losing out on damage you would otherwise have been able to deal because of this arbitrary number. And this combat beta gets rid of the hit caps almost entirely, and it raises that arbitrary number from 10,000 all the way up to 30,000, which is still hittable, but a lot less frequent. This is a very significant damage increase to the melee and the range combat styles, because in a Berserk, with melee, a lot of your abilities would go right up against that hit cap, and now they'll be able to go over. With range, it's a similar story, but a little more over the top, because I was able to hit like an absolute bus, and the damage output with range was completely crazy. That clip I showed at the beginning with the Saren Godbo special also is busted because of this chain. The Ruby Bolt special effect that I've put on screen here is not really based on your setup or anything else. It's just based on your HP and your target's HP, and it is gonna hit cap. And because the first hit of the Saren Godbo special is what determines all of the other hits in the special, if you get a Ruby Bolt activation on that first Saren Godbo hit, every single hit in the special is going to be a 30k. So obviously, that is something they are going to have to look at. Overall though, this change is really nice, and it's especially nice for melee, where I was frequently able to use Dragon Claws and also Chaos Roar, which doubles the damage of my next ability into a Dragon Claw special attack or an overpower without losing an absolute ton of damage, just ending up up against the hit caps. So overall, this is another really good change that I'm quite happy with. It's worth noting that magic isn't terribly impacted by this because magic didn't really go far above those hit caps for the majority of abilities. For pretty much every ability with the exception of detonate, which could go over and now will do a little bit more damage than it did before. The last large change in this beta is the change to the critical strike system. And they pretty much just applied the necromancy critical strike system instead of the traditional one. And I'll explain how they both work now. In the traditional system, your base chance of a critical strike is extremely low. And if you roll a critical strike, you'll be hitting between 80% and 100% of your maximum damage. So effectively, in the old system, if you roll a critical strike, it'll just be in the upper echelon of the damage range of your weapon. 
This new system is completely different, and you actually get bonus damage applied if you roll a critical strike based on your level. So for example, with Necromancy at level 120, rolling a critical strike on a hit that would have been 10,000 will automatically boost it by 70% as a flat damage increase. And this is extremely impactful for the other combat styles. What this new system means in practice is that any critical strike you're rolling with magic, melee, or range is gonna deal a lot more damage than it did before. And this is especially powerful when you're using the range combat style because there are so many high hitting abilities. Some good examples that you'll be seeing on screen right now are the Dark Bow Special Attack, the Saren God Bow Special Attack, and the Bow of the Lost Guardian Special Attack, where you're gonna see a number of times where I'm hitting 50,000 to 70,000 damage with a single attack because every hit crits and just does an absolutely ridiculous hit splat repeatedly. This is also pretty cool with melee, and if you look at these clips at Vindicta, whenever I was rolling enough crits, my dragon claws just hit and hit and hit, and I was able to complete some very fast kills where I did a lot of damage. And you may not think this would be highly impactful with magic, but magic actually rolls more critical strikes than any of the other combat styles, for the most part because of Greater Concentrated Blast. And because of this, a Fractured Staff of Armor Rotation felt very consistent and very clean. And I did a number of tests back to back to back. It was always extremely smooth sailing. Dude, I'm hitting really hard. Like, I'm not gonna lie, magic is really freaking consistent. <laughs> So even though you're not seeing those crazy 30k hits, magic does get a very large boost out of this, and I quite like the feel of it. Overall, from a balance standpoint, they're gonna have to do a ton to this, but I think all of these changes are really, really good if they can be implemented in a way that is fair and is balanced. Obviously, range looks a little bit overtuned. Melee felt a lot more fun under this new system, but still has a lot of fundamental issues with it. And honestly, magic pretty much felt like the pre-nerf fractured staff of Arbital. It felt really good, really smooth, and there isn't a whole lot I think they need to change about it. One other thing I'm going to talk about is defensives, because one defensive got an absolutely massive buff out of this. What you're looking at right now is me using the Reflect ability on the Frost Cannon at Archglacier, and as you can see, it is now uncapped, where in the prior system, you could not reflect more than 10,000 damage. This is going to be extremely good at Telos, at Archglacier, and at Zamorak, to name a few bosses, and especially with Bone Shield, where you can cast Reflect without hampering your damage output, Reflect is now going to be a very strong offensive ability with a lot of uses, and I'm absolutely a fan of that. I also tried out Reprisal, but Reprisal was still soft capped at 10,000 damage, although I did get a confirmation from Mod Sponge that that has been fixed, and the next iteration of the beta is going to have 30,000 damage capped Reprisal, which should be an absolute blast to play around with. Overall, those are my thoughts from the first day of the beta, and Mod Sponge has let us know that he's going to be making an absolute ton of changes to it, so there are going to be many different iterations. There's a ton of stuff they want to play around with, and I'm all for that. I think that's exactly what a beta should be used for, and they should continue making changes until they get everything absolutely perfect. The next change that he's going to be making is squishing the damage range on every single ability in the game. So instead of, for example, hitting between 20 and 120%, he's going to flatten those down so that the ability would instead do between 50 and 70% ability damage. This is nice because if you're gonna hit an ability, it's kind of unsatisfying to randomly mineral. The average damage is gonna be the same, but it's a nice way to intuitively tell you that you're hitting a good button if it does a good amount of damage. That's everything I discovered trying out the beta on day one. And if you have any thoughts or any ideas for the combat beta, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. I have an interview scheduled later this week with Mod Sponge, so I'm gonna be sitting down with him and I'll be passing on as many of your ideas as I possibly can. That being said, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or evening wherever you are in the world, and I hope you all enjoy.